Hey, what's up? I want to give you guys a quick tour of our Seller Labs Pro software. Now, one note is that there are so many great features that Pro has to offer. We're not going to be able to go into great detail with all of them. But as always, if you have any additional questions about the features or the functions or just something that you want to know more about, our customer success team is standing by and they are more than happy to take your questions about Pro or about any of the pieces of the software that you see that maybe you have more interest to know more about. With that said, let's get into it. The first thing you're going to see here is your dashboard. This is going to serve as kind of your home base. It's going to have a lot of great general insight about your account. Now, one cool thing here is that the default date range is 60 days, but you can adjust it to anything you'd like, whether it be some of the defaults like seven days, 30 days, or maybe you want to build your own custom range. All of that can be done from the drop down. Another cool feature on this page is that you can make sure that you're completely set up to use all of the features of Pro with this setup process box here. So you wanna make sure that you have communication set up, your notifications are set, that you've connected your advertisement and that you're utilizing the Keyword Research Center. If any of those are underutilized or not being utilized or connected, you will see a lack of a check mark here and that's how you know that you still need to get that done. Another thing about this page is that all the information here is for one marketplace. And so if you do have additional marketplaces like other countries you sell in, or if you're an agency and you're selling for and working with lots of different sellers, then this drop down will help you access those marketplaces so you can see their data and you can quickly toggle between those marketplaces. So again, this is your dashboard and we're going to move right along to our product catalog. By the way, this left-hand navigation, this is everything you need right here. It's going to take you everywhere you need to go with the software and be able to access all the different parts that Pro has to offer. So your product catalog is going to be where you can access all your data on finances and inventory. So by default, you're going to see a strategic view, which has a lot of really great information, but it may not be everything that you're looking for. So one cool thing about this page is that you can build a custom view. So when you create custom view, you'll see all of these other options for data that we can give you for your account. And I will say one thing about this page, if you feel like you're missing data or something just doesn't feel right, it may be an issue with your connections. Maybe you didn't finish a secondary connection or something needs to be updated. So again, reach out to our team if you see anything weird with the data on this page. Another cool thing is that if you switch to communications view, you will notice that there's an additional option now to track for reviews. This is really important. If you want to monitor new product reviews for your products, you have to be tracking them in order to do that. You can also create short names here for the products. If you're sending custom messages that we'll talk about in just a minute from the communication center, um, then in order to get maybe a smaller, more sleek or optimized looking message, you can create a short name so that the entire product name doesn't show up. That is a really cool feature that we offer. That way your messages seem more personable and they don't seem like they are written by robots or a software and it's a great way to connect better with your buyers. So let's move right along into our communication center. First, we see a performance dashboard. It looks very similar to your main dashboard, but this is just for your communication data. So that's gonna include messages that you're sending. It's gonna include how many orders you've gotten. So you can kind of compare those two numbers. It's gonna give you really quick access to this awesome blog we have that's all about the updated buyer seller guidelines. As we all know, Amazon changes those uh, basically the weekly or monthly. It happens really quickly sometimes. And so we have all of the updated information there. So you don't have to try to decipher all of their terms of service and their guidelines in Seller Central which can be a lot to take in. You're also gonna see other data, um, like you can quickly create a new message strategy from here, as well as see what kind of templates you already have created or new feedback or product reviews that have come in. So if we move down the list to your automated messages tab, this is the communication center's real bread and butter is right here. This is where you can create a new message strategy. And that could be something like an Amazon review request or a personal message. 
Now, as a note, we recommend strongly that you just send one message per order. So that's either going to be the Amazon request to review, which is the request to review button that's in Seller Central on the order detail page. We're going to automate that for you, and then Amazon will send a review request. The other options on this page for these templates are going to be templates we've created that are Amazon compliant with their latest buyer mes seller messaging uh, compliance guidelines. Now, as a note, if you do adjust or add your own text or personal touches, it could be non-compliant. So after you've created a custom message, definitely reach out to our team and just let them know you want someone to look over it to make sure that it's still compliant. And we are happy to do that. We want to make sure that you're set up for success and that you're not going to get flagged by Amazon for any reason. So you can choose templates here or you can totally build your own. Maybe you already have a message in mind. So if we go back to that automated messages page, a couple more things to point out here. Um, you'll see that you can choose a language and we'll quickly show you that here. Um, again, this is where you can see all the marketplaces. Every message is set up to send to one specific marketplace. So if you are an agency uh, running different accounts, you won't accidentally send a message to the wrong marketplace because they are set up per marketplace. The other thing to note here is the sending email. So you can see here that you can edit this email. This is gonna be an approved sender email located in your messaging permissions on Seller Central. An email listed there has to match this email that you've inputted for your sending email. If any of that was confusing, no worries. Our success team can help you answer that question and make sure that those emails match because it's important. If they don't match, we can't send messages on your behalf. You can change the status here from active, where they're actively sending out to your buyers, to paused, where they're not sending, or to test, where they're not sending to your buyers, but you will see a copy of them in your sent message summary. And I'll show you what it looks like in just a second. So if we move on from this page to the received messages, this is where you're gonna be able to see new product reviews, which as we talked about earlier, you can get if you're tracking items from your product catalog and then also new seller feedback. So you can see that as well. By default, all of the date ranges are 60 days, just like your dashboard, but you can adjust that to see other feedback that's come in or see newer feedback. Maybe you get a ton every week and you just wanna see what's come in the last few days. You can do that on this page with the filters. In the sent message page, this is where you can see any custom or personal messages that have gone out. As a note, the Amazon review request option is not going to show up in this page because this is where we show you messages that we have sent on your behalf. Amazon sends the other message, and so we're not going to be able to show you that message here since Amazon is the one who's sending it. As you can see for the test messages, this is what they look like right here. It looks like a real message. It has a real order ID attached to it and real information, but it says test in the name. That way you can kind of get an idea if you click on it, what this message looked like when it was sent to one of your buyers. And the last thing I'll show you are just the settings for your communication center. This is where you can set up an email address for test messages. So uh, when you're creating a message, you have an option to save and send yourself a test message. Uh, and you, you can set an email here, and that's the email address that will get that test message in case you are wanting to see like a quick look at what the message will look like when it's formatted and actually sent to someone's inbox um, instead of just looking at it while you're editing it. You can also utilize the blacklist. So the blacklist is a place where again, any personal or custom messages, you can keep a buyer from getting those messages. All you have to do is click add customer to blacklist and put in their email. That's This is the encrypted email from Seller Central or their order ID, click add, and then that buyer will not get any custom or personal messages that you have set up. So again, that means that if you are using the Amazon request to review feature, the blacklist is not gonna work with that feature. It will only work with custom or personal messages. Okay, let's move on and look at our advertising center. 
So again, you'll see in the advertising center, the first page looks a lot like that main dashboard. You've got a lot of great data, data available to you. Now, one thing to point out here is that the same setup process box is gonna be here as is on the main page, except this one is specifically for your advertising data. You wanna make sure that you first connected your data, you set your target A cost, you've defined a monthly budget to monitor, and that if you need, you've created some new advertising strategies. And we will talk about those things in just a minute. Another cool feature here is that you can adjust what view you have on this graph. So maybe you wanna see two different metrics at the same time. Maybe you just wanna see one metric. You can click on these different metrics and get an idea and compare any two at any given time. So there's a lot of uh, really good custom functionality to this page. And as you may notice, a lot of this is our details that are available on Seller Central, but it's laid out in a nice way. It's easy to read easy to consume, it's not as jumbled or all over the place as Seller Central may feel. So that is a really nice feature. If we move on to the strategies page. So strategies is gonna be something a little different. It's something that is unique to our software. What strategies does is it allows you, all you have to do is actually put in the products you wanna advertise on, you pick a daily budget and a goal, and then we actually create five brand new campaigns for you and we will run those campaigns through our AI for you. And so that way, if you're somebody who maybe says you're new advertising on Amazon, or if you just have new products and you're not sure what strategy to use just yet, you'll let our system run it for you. We'll run the auto campaign, we'll run the manual campaigns, we will adjust the data, we'll adjust the bids, we'll remove negative keywords, we'll archive keywords, we'll move profitable search terms into the manual campaigns. We'll do all of that for you so that you don't have to do that. All you need to do is have a product that you want to advertise on and then have a daily budget that you're ready to set for those five campaigns. And we take care of the rest. This can still be a little confusing since it is something that is so unique to our software. So again, please feel free to reach out to our customer success team if you do have any questions about strategies. It's pretty cool. Now, as we move on to the campaigns page, So with the campaigns page, again, you're gonna see a lot of really great data. You've got that graph that you can customize. It's available on this page as well. You can see all of your campaigns. If you scroll down a little bit, these are the campaigns you're running. So the biggest thing about this page is here's where you can set your target ACoS. So the target ACoS is what drives suggestions, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, but suggestions are really important. And so if you come down here, you'll see that every campaign has an option to set a target ACoS. If you don't have one set, you will notice that we're giving you a little warning that you need to set one in order to start getting suggestions. And so you can quickly click the pencil, edit the number. All you have to do is type in a whole number here for the percentage and then click the check mark. And now you've got suggestions populating for this campaign. As a note, it might take about 24 hours for new suggestions to start populating once you set the target A cost, if it is the first time that you're setting it for a campaign or it's a newer campaign, it may even take a little longer for suggestions to come through in general if this is a brand new campaign that doesn't have a ton of data. You can also quickly toggle to between groups. Maybe you have some campaign groups created, which we will talk about in a few minutes as well. Um, so if you wanna see the data for these groups, you can see those. And then we have this really cool change log, which just shows you a history of different changes that were made to your campaign. So this is really cool. Uh, that way you kinda can look back. Maybe you've got a team of people working the advertising. You just wanna make sure you're all on the same page about what's being done. The change log is incredibly helpful for that. So if we move to suggestions, you'll see on this page, this is kind of a, uh, the advertising center's bread and butter, um, is the suggestions. And so what it is, is we're gonna take that target ACoS you've set and we're gonna give you suggested actions for your campaigns based on that target ACoS. And so these suggestion actions might be for the keywords. Um, it's gonna tell you what it is, what the match type is, what campaign it's located in. It's gonna tell you the type of action which is gonna be create an exact keyword. The suggested is to move it from the auto campaign to a manual. We have a confidence and importance bar, and then you're either gonna see take action or approve. If you have an approve button next to the suggestion, when you click that, as I'll do here, you'll see that it immediately went through. That suggestion was successfully implemented. I get a little message saying it was done. If you have a take action button, it's a little different because we need to know what campaign you wanna move this uh, keyword into, you actually need to choose a campaign here. 
And so you'll choose the campaign through the list and then you'll hit approve. And then this keyword and this suggestion will do it. Once you hit approve or take action and follow the prompts, we actually take that suggested action for you. So you don't have to do it. Um, we already did it for you. We make it really easy. So let's talk about how to know when to approve the suggestions. It's all about the confidence and importance. The confidence is how much data the advertising center has about this suggested action. And the importance is how much it's going to affect you moving from your current ACoS to your target ACoS. And so that way you kind of have an idea how much are we like, you know, confident this is a good suggested action and how important is this suggested action? I always let people know that confidence, you want to make sure it's a little higher, maybe closer to 75 or 80% before you take the suggested actions. Um, and, but importance can actually be a little lower. As you see with this one, the importance is very low, but the confidence is very high. If you have a really high confidence suggestion, I would still suggest that taking a look at it and potentially still approving it, even if the importance is a little lower. There also is another option on the suggestion page here for automation. And so you can actually automate per campaign the suggested actions um, for everything that is for the approved option. If there is a take action button that still requires some kind of manual interference on your part, but for the most part, almost all of our suggested actions can be automated and you can quickly set that up here for every campaign or just certain campaigns. There even is some nice advanced functionality like this will only run on certain days. Maybe you want to manually approve suggestions Monday through Friday, but you want the system to automatically approve them Saturday and Sunday. You can set that up on this page. It's pretty awesome. And there's even another handy change log about the suggested actions that were taken, whether you took them, which it'll say user, or whether the system automatically took them and it will let you know that the system took it. So that way you can kind of keep track of what suggested actions the system automated while you were away. And the last page we'll look at is a keywords page. Much like the campaigns page, it is just a page that shows you all of the different keywords that are available for your uh, currently active and paused campaigns. They're gonna be listed here. Um, you can see all the data, you can use some of our filters. We have some really awesome, really manual filters you can put in. Maybe you're looking for very specific things. You also can show different ones like the state they're in, the serving status for the campaigns, the match type, or just for certain campaigns. So there's a lot of really cool data and a lot of cool custom functionality you can do on this page. The same goes for search terms. So this is gonna be all the search terms in your auto campaigns that you're running. The same data will be available and you can see what kind of search terms that Amazon is utilizing for these auto campaigns and how they're performing. And then you have a negative keyword page, which again is just gonna be a list of all of the keywords that you've negated across all of your campaigns. Now, as a note, this is really cool to look at for a big picture for all of your campaigns, but every individual campaign that you look at will also have options to view keywords, search terms, and then the negative keywords that you've inputted for those campaigns. So don't feel like you have to always go to this page and be overwhelmed by the data every time you're looking for certain keywords or maybe certain campaign data. So that's it for our advertising center. Let's move to our keyword research center. So the Keyword Research Center is very simple, but it's very cool. So it's a way that you can kind of spy on your competitors a little bit and get some uh, estimations on how they're performing. Maybe you're looking to optimize your listings with some new keywords, or you're looking to optimize your advertising with some new keywords. This is gonna be really awesome. So the way it works is that you will either input an ASIN or you'll utilize the Google Chrome extension that we have that goes along with this page. How do you get that extension, you asked? If you click research, you'll see there's an option here at the bottom to download that extension onto Chrome. And all you have to do is utilize it on Amazon. Just go to their webpage, maybe amazon.com, and you'll see the extension automatically is at the bottom for you to utilize. So when you start tracking ASINs, you'll see them here. So you wanna track child ASINs or standalone ASINs. And when you do have an ASIN tracked here, you can click on it and you'll be brought to its product, product detail page. So what's really cool about this product detail page is it gives you some things like price and fee calculators, some different item summary options, and then some change logs of different things that have changed. 
But the really cool thing about this page is the list of keywords. And so if we scroll down a little bit, you'll see that you get a keyword list and we even rank them by a score. A score for the keyword is gonna be from one to 100. One being the worst, 100 being the best. And this is a score that we've built based on an algorithm. And one really cool tip that I'll give you is that if you're ever confused about what these different uh, kind of columns and categories mean, if you hover over the tool tips, you'll get a pretty good idea of our breakdown of what some of this data actually means. So what you can do with this is download this data and then you can utilize it however you're looking for. Again, optimizing listings, uh, updating uh, product names or listing names, using it in advertising. This is a way you can kind of take your competitor's products, get good estimations on what they're doing well with and what keywords are working well for them, and then utilize those in your own advertising and to optimize your own listings. And there are so many cool ways you can do that. Um, thankfully this product is here and it will continue to be utilized. And so that way you can continue using it. So maybe you'll have new competitors or you discover new products in the categories, or maybe, um, you are creating a brand new product and you just want to do some research on those, what products are already doing well in the same category. All of that's going to be really useful to utilize this keyword research center. So the keyword list looks exactly like the product list, except you're tracking new keywords. Then we have this keyword generator here as well, that when you go there, what you can do is just type in a keyword or a phrase. Maybe you sell backpacks, so you just type in the word backpack. Looks like my internet is being insanely slow on us, so we're gonna move on to the notifications page. So notifications is one of the last features that we will talk about. So notifications are going to be really, really helpful for your account. That way you don't have to feel like you're always having to check on the account to make sure you see things like maybe you lost the buy box for certain products or maybe um, your campaigns are running out of budget. Instead of having to constantly look out for those things and making a list of those things to have to come check all the time, you can just set these up in notifications. So we'll send them to you. They're on this page as well as always available in this drop down notification alerts here on every page. And then you can go to your settings to set up the kind of notifications that you want to get. So that could be summaries, it could be compliance notifications, buy box changes. We have all these really great notifications that you can set up here. And you can also adjust how you want to get these. So if I click on settings, you'll see that I can either get emails for some, some I can get uh, in app or text message or emails. So there's lots of options to get these notifications so that you can stay on top of it, whether you're in office, out of office, traveling, there are lots of different ways you can get these different notifications for your account. And so if we go to the account profile, like it suggests, you'll see that down here you have the option to adjust the email and the phone number that you're gonna get notifications to. Maybe you own the account, but you have someone running it for you. This is a great way to allow them to get the notifications and so that you can keep track of staying on the account, keep the login information, all of that is yours. Um, but as far as the actual information for your notifications, that can go to somebody else on your team, maybe somebody who's handling it so that you don't have to always pass them off to somebody. They can immediately take it. The last thing I'll show you is just the connections page. So this is just the page where you can add new marketplaces. You can manage which one you see by default when you log in. And then you can also make sure your connections are all set. Have you connected your advertising? Are your marketplaces active? And have you done the seller central invitation, which is a secondary invitation um, that you need to do in order to get all of the data pulled in so you can utilize all that Pro has to offer? I can't emphasize enough. I know we went through that really fast. Please, please, please feel free to reach out to our customer success team if you have any questions about what we went over. And they are more than happy to take you through any parts of the Pro software to answer any specific questions you have um, or just to help guide you. And maybe you're looking for a feature or a functionality and you want to know if we have it. They can help you take care of that. I hope you guys have a great day and happy selling.